My name is Jim Hellfield, and we're standing on the South Fork of the Nooksack River, where uh, we've just been collecting some instruments that's part of a long-term study, which is assessing the effectiveness of uh, some habitat restorations, salmon habitat restoration. Uh, I've been working in collaboration with the Nooksack Indian Tribe, and they've been building these large engineered log jams, such as that one over there, that you see over there. And those are designed to help uh, alter the river's flow to create deep, complex pools that should provide good habitat for salmon. So for the past few years, we've been out here measuring water temperature, bed topography, uh, fish use. And we've also been measuring hyperic exchange because we're curious to see if when these log jams are built, when the pools go in, if that'll encourage more shallow groundwater upwell into the river, which might help keep things cool. Uh, so we just spent today walking up and down the river to various plots, pulling some of my temperature loggers that I've had out there, which have been measuring water temperatures, and taking pictures of some of the log jams. About half of the log jams have already been built. The other half will be built starting next year, and then we'll be able to see how those log jams have, have changed habitat. So the main focus of this work is for what we call the early Chinook. These are the spring and summer run Chinook salmon. They enter this river uh, in the summertime, and they have to spend pretty much the hottest time of the year in the river before they get a chance to spawn in the fall. In this river, uh, the South Fork here, unlike the North and Middle Forks, uh, which drain glaciers, the South Fork just drains snow fields off the systems. And so it has a tendency to get very warm in the summertime. And so uh, a big focus of our work is trying to create pockets of cool water refuge for those early Chinook salmon. And so far what we're seeing is that uh, the overwhelming majority of the early Chinook that we're seeing in this river here are making use of those log jams. They're hunkered down in the bottom, in the low, cool parts of the river under the logs. When temperatures get to be above 16 degrees Celsius, uh, it's really hard on the salmon and their mortality rates increase drastically. So if we can provide these little pockets of cool water here and there where the fish can hold for a little while, cool off and then make their way further upstream, we think that that'll improve their chances of, of successfully reaching the spawning grounds. At the same time, the baby salmon, the young juveniles, after they emerge from the gravel, those log jams provide those same pools, provide excellent refuge habitat for them, where they can get out of the main current, they can get down and hide among all the, the, lo the root wads and branches and they can get away from their predators and they can also cool off and, and there's you know more oxygen saturated down there, and so it's just better habitat for virtually all life stages. This project, I should say, is run largely with undergraduate field technicians. So we bring the students out here, they help me to collect the data, uh, we take it back to the lab, they analyze the data. Having all of this stuff so close to the university, it's like we've got, we've got the outdoors as our lab. It's right here. The other thing that I think is you know, special about this project is uh, it's been a really nice collaboration between the university and, and the Nooksack tribe. It's been a nice thing for our students to be able to get involved and get to meet professionals who work there. And salmon are an iconic cultural, economic, social, religious icon here. Uh, they, 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 play, they play such an important role in, in the culture of the Northwest. And there are a lot of us here who have pretty much dedicated our careers to trying to preserve them and, and maintain them in harvestable sizes. Um, sometimes it feels like we're fighting a losing battle, uh, but sometimes there's reason for hope, um, like on a day like today where we can see some of these log jams that we've built and we can see some of those huge salmon that are, that are hiding down and making use of them. So, um, yeah, I think, it's, I think there's reason to be optimistic.